Welcome back to TarHeelIllustrated.com, or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me, as he always does, THI publisher Andrew Jones. And Andrew, we're here for the second episode of our Carolina Football ISO series that we're going to be rolling out uh, all throughout kind of the spring and summer now that we're in the off season, I should say. Notice the, 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 the hyphenated quotes around that one in the off season right now. Um, spring football is behind us. The spring games behind us, gonna. It's a great time to kind of focus on these guys as, as Carolina steps closer and closer to fall camp in August. But before we dive into that, promos over on our website, TarHillIllustrated.com. But still, it's just eight thirty three a month to sign up. You get premium access to our boards, premium access to, to content that you can't access unless you're signed up for that. A lot of the stuff we post on the boards as well never goes on the front page. You get scoops, you get some insight into what's going on, whether it's with the teams or the programs or whether it's with football and basketball recruiting, you know, you, David, sis, Dina King, I'm on there. Ton of people on there work really hard. So definitely come join our community if interested and you want to kind of get a little more behind the scenes look and get a little more in-depth analysis of what's going on with Carolina football, basketball, and recruiting. So after this video is over, hit the description below. You'll find our link in there and go sign up for just eight thirty-three a month. But AJ, as the people can tell by the title, we're here to talk about Sam Howe, a guy that has just, since he arrived in Chapel Hill during his freshman season, South Carolina game seems like a long time ago, but he is just impressed, has just continued to get better, followed his stellar freshman season up with a really good sophomore season last season for the Tar Heels, and now he's a legit Heisman candidate and somebody that's being kind of tossed around as a legit Heisman prospect going into the 2021 season, AJ. So, I mean... There's not a lot that we can probably say that hasn't already been said about Sam Howell, but when I utter the word Sam Howell, what comes to your mind, AJ? <laughs> well, I'm going to offer something that a lot of people wouldn't think of because they don't have the experiences with Sam that we've had. Mm -hmm. So um, everybody knows that Sam could throw, make every throw. Everybody knows that Sam makes such great reads. And makes really good decisions. And he's quicker now, by the way. And even with the practices, we saw some of the scrimmages, spring game, everything. It's clear that he's quicker, not just getting around, but he could dart at the middle and get you eight yards. Or maybe he couldn't have gotten me. Would have gotten you five a year ago. Would have gotten you nothing two years ago. So he's definitely quicker. But where I'm going to go with this is something that I think is really, really important, especially this year, because they lost a lot of skill guys. They lost loud voices in that room. Michael Carter was a loud voice. Javante wasn't a loud voice, but he was awfully respected. And he had a presence. Diami the same way. Daz was a loud voice and respected. So there's more of an onus on Sam to be that voice this year. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if you're going to be a Heisman Trophy candidate, and if you're going to be a quarterback of a team that thinks has a shot at the CFB, and if you're a prospective, possibly number one overall pick in the NFL draft, and you're a quarterback, you got to have a voice. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You cannot be that guy and not have a loud voice that commands respect and understands what to say. It's not just making noise, it's the importance of what comes out of his mouth. And one of the things, and I've told you this a thousand times, Jacob, perhaps, I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but it's one of my favorite things about this, this job that I have, this career that I've had. And I've covered all four major pro sports. Covered the Carolina Hurricanes a lot. Covered the Panthers and the Cam Newton, early Cam Newton days. I covered the Bobcats before they became the Hornets again. I even covered a little Major League Baseball. But my favorite thing about covering college sports, which I prefer over pro, is watching kids like Sam Howell come in as true freshmen. And suddenly the weight of the world is on him because he's a starting quarterback. And his interviews with us were short answers, maybe not really sure where to go with something. So everything he – you know, when you interviewed Sam Howell as a freshman, it was like opening up a can, and here came the responses that were prepackaged. Mm -hmm. Now Sam goes a little further. He goes a little deeper yeah. into things. That's a good point. And we we asked him, we had him right before the end of spring practice, and he was asked about wide receivers. He was asked about running backs. I asked him about backup quarterbacks. And he's not just giving us canned answers. He's giving us specifics about these guys. Mm -hmm. He was also asked about – Okay, what did you learn during the spring? What, were, what, was your, what was your number one point of emphasis personally, and what did you learn? Well, he talked about getting his timing down because they lost some of those skilled guys. He talked about 
you know, immersing himself in with those guys, being connected, the chemistry that they had at the end of spring that they had to start working on, but when spring practice started. So he speaks like a coach, like a coordinator. He speaks like a guy who teaches and even said he has been teaching Drake May and Jacoby Criswell some. So Mm -hmm. we have a much more mature, a much more self-assured. We have a been there, done that guy that we hear. And that means he's that guy in that room. Mm-hmm. And they don't huddle much, but maybe when they get in the red zone or close to the goal line in a tight situation on the road when it's a noisy stadium and Sam needs to say something to the team, he's going to be capable of saying what needs to be said and getting through to each guy now, or maybe he wasn't that guy a couple of years ago. Yeah, it's, I've really enjoyed it. It's been cool for me too, because, you know, I obviously came in a lot. I've only been doing this for about two and a half years now, almost three, but I've been able to kind of see Sam from – the time I've been here from the minute he got onto campus during that spring practice leading up to it when he was competing with Fortin and Ruger for that starting spot to now when he's just got so many lofty expectations with him because of how he's performed over the past couple of seasons. Now, before we wrap this one up, I want to ask you one last question. You've covered a ton of guys. You already mentioned it. you've been doing this forever, what, 25 years now. Is he the most impressive college quarterback you've seen or covered in person in your time doing this? Yeah, and if you could hear my dog barking at the UPS guy outside, he's really barking because he's excited about Sam Howell as well. But (laughs) but I'll tell you what, I covered Russell Wilson Mm -hmm. extensively. When I was at Fox, I had an assignment one time where my job, some of NC State football players went to a Walmart and they were buying gifts for kids at Christmas time. And my job was to follow Russell around the whole time with the camera. That's pretty sweet. And what I thought was really interesting is Mike Lennon was poking all kinds of fun at him. I mean, he was trying to crack Russell Wilson, and he couldn't do it. And when I started being around Sam and seeing how he comported himself and went about things and talking to people who know him, I started hearing and seeing and hearing the same things I heard about Russell Wilson, Mm -hmm. the the dedication to craft, the intelligence, a guy who's always under control within, who doesn't ever get flustered. I would imagine when guys rib Sam, they can't crack him. Just like Mike Lennon couldn't crack Russell Wilson. Um, he's a different kind of guy than Philip Rivers was. I covered Philip. He was a phenomenal player. He was very loud and boisterous and was a fanny smacker and would get in the faces of opposing defenders, even in college. Everybody saw that in the NFL. But Sam's a lot more like Russell. And I think that knack that Russell had for stepping up at the right moment and making that play, I think Sam has that. And I think Sam's going to be successful at the next level Mm -hmm. because if you were to stop Russell in the building, in the, in the Seahawks building and ask him a question about the opponent that week or some obscure thing about their offense, that's on page 77 of the playbook. He'll be able to answer it. I think Sam is the exact same kind of guy. So Russell Wilson is the one that comes closest to mind. And I think Sam's got a little more arm strength. Mm -hmm. I think Sam throws a tighter ball. And I think Sam may have a little more upside on making the big play. He's got a ways to go to being uh, as innovative as Russell was. I mean, Russell won a game at Chapel Hill because of his innovation. Uh, But with the quick added quickness that we've seen from Sam this spring, maybe that part of his game will come out a little bit more next season. But Sam and Russell right there. and, And I think Sam potentially because of the honors he could accumulate this year because of what, where this team could play he may well pass russell by and philip philip was, philip was, yeah, awesome. was great too i remember when sam first arrived you said just how philip was as a freshman kind of reminded you how sam was as a freshman in, in front prolific of the he's gonna have philip rivers numbers russell wilson calm coolness and control and we'll see if he's got a little bit of Marquise Williams leadership. Marquise Williams might be the best leader of a quarterback I've covered. He's a phenomenal leader. You know, Russell, Philip would get in the opposing team's heads. Marquise would get in his own team. Mm-hmm. He, he was a great fanny smacker. We talk about it in basketball, like you need a fanny smacker. If you're going to contend for a national title. Marquise was a great fanny smacker. I think we're going to see a little bit of that from, from uh, Sam this fall as well. Yeah, good stuff, AJ. Really interested to see you see what kind of steps Sam continues in his development this season, especially with these you know lofty expectations and, and with the talent that he has around him on both sides of the ball. It's gonna gonna be an interesting one and gonna be a fun one to see how he continues to develop. That's gonna do it for this episode, though, guys. Second ever episode of our Carolina Football ISO series. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. As a quick reminder, click the link in the description. Head on over to our site, TarHillIllustrated.com and sign up for just 
33 a month. Like, share, subscribe, go tell a friend about our channel, about this video, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.